I'm not going to trust it. Okay. I, I, yeah. Unless I can go to the bank and trade that thing in for $50,000, I don't trust it. What is going on guys? We've got March 18th, 2021. Fourth episode of What the Bitcoin. Let's get right to work. I am Joshua and I'm joined today with Mary. Mary, I am here today to ask you about Bitcoin. Before we get into any further questioning, I'd just like to ask you what you think about it in general. It's a non-item for me. A non-item, okay. And what do you mean by that? Like in terms of you don't, don't think about it or? imaginary thing that people that have too much money and too much time play with it's not an everyday person issue okay when did you first hear about Bitcoin I heard about it probably about 10 years ago and, really and it's been up and down and zero and then to do you know I what the current money. trading price of Bitcoin is right now I know that I hear that it's very high it's at fifty seven thousand dollars a coin if you would have bought what you purchased there for Panda Express, you could fill up this entire parking lot with, with uh, Chrysler Town and Countries. There are a lot of scams. Okay. In my opinion, yes, everything I've heard about it is too good to be true. Okay. And I appreciate you holding your ground. Old enough that I've seen scams come okay. and go. So how much longer do you think the Bitcoin scam can last? I think that a lot of people will be enticed into it. Okay. And about the time every those people think they've got big money. Yes, ma'am. The bust will happen. The bottom will fall out, and it will end up being like Enron. I see. Okay. And then, being that I just told you Bitcoin's at fifty-seven thousand, what price point do you think it would get to when what you just said happened? It's always going to be too good to be true. It's not backed by the federal government. I don't see it backed by any big international agency. So that allows it to be prone to... Morgan Stanley released this morning that they're actually in, in works of trying to figure it out a little I bit. I don't trust Morgan Stanley. They've been very... Who would, you, who would you trust? Federal government. So if the federal government created an agenda, which and is going to extrapolate it. it beyond what it is right now, which is very beautiful currency. If I wanted to purchase your van, ma'am, I could actually send you that currency without having to involve the middleman, and you could take that Bitcoin and cash it to cash. It. Okay, I'm. Uh, do you trust me though? No. Why? I don't know you. Oh, oh, I don't mean trust me, like you know, to watch your home. I mean trust me as a person. And we were making good eye contact today, and okay. There are a lot of people, even at car dealerships, that will tell me something, and then when it comes down to yeah. the brass tax of it, yeah. it's lies. No. Or they said, oh no. Yeah. It's this. My age and experience yes. has said that something that you're telling me is worth 50 some thousand dollars per point, I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to trust it. Okay. I, I, yeah. Unless I can go to the bank and trade that thing in for $50,000, I don't trust it. Okay. Yeah. If you have to use some other third party to piggyback it to your bank, that's untrustworthy to you. Yeah. Do you have a Gmail account, like an email account? I do. Do you know those are less encrypted potentially than, than I Bitcoin? Do it very little. I don't do online banking. Okay. All right. Well, there goes my argument there. You, you swallowed that because one up and I shoot don't it out. It. Let me tell you, I'm yes, Mary. No, I. Mary. Okay. And that name has a lot of trouble because there's a lot of Mary. Yes, ma'am. I've run into problems where banks processed other married items through my account. I see what you're saying. As a married I've got other people's Yeah, well, um, okay. Real quick, I'd like so to... I don't trust the system. Okay, I would like to say this, and it's just an educational piece on Bitcoin, okay? Let's say that Bitcoin, and I'm going to stem away from it being a currency, the, the, the underlying technology of it is something called blockchain. What blockchain is, is if, if you were at the, the dentist and they prescribed you a pain medicine, and then that pain medicine went to Walgreens and then you paid for that with, with Bank of America, right? That paper trail is forever ingrained into the blockchain and it never goes anywhere. It doesn't require files, it doesn't require anything. And that's what's beautiful about Bitcoin is that it's blockchain and blockchain technology is actually gonna combat you ever being confused with another marriage. I promise. No, but whether you trust it or not, the technology will be adopted by the banks. Technology is, is ripe 
for uh, corruption okay. and for uh, people getting into your account. Yes. And it's just as problematic as being married. Yes, ma'am. So for me, Bitcoin is just another scam. I'm old enough that I've seen, I can't say every scam, but most of the scams. Yes, ma'am. And when you get so old, you just get to a point where you're seeing version seven of another scam. Yeah. And uh, is it a similar song and dance? Sometimes. Sometimes. And sometimes it's buried in some fear that's the current fear yeah. of bankruptcy or of, of uh, illness. And they use that fear or story or scam line and people tell you things. And just because they tell it to you yeah. doesn't mean it's real. Yes, it just may be version 5, version 6, version 7 of some old scam that when you've lived long enough. Yeah. You start do you think it's the same people running the same scam over and over to just, or do you think it's new people just trying to make money or? I think it's these smart little young people that are good at manipulation that look at the fat past and see things or have heard things and they go, ooh. So who do you think, that. who do you think owns Bitcoin? I'm going to say some computer geek. Okay. What age do you think? I'm going to say, 40 to 50. Okay, and if it were to be a nefarious scam of sort, you would think that it'd be very calculated that they researched past scams and that they can make it more believable this well, time. If they didn't research it, you know, there's four or five of them, and they all maybe have little bits or puzzle pieces to the scam. Yeah. And they put it together and make a new puzzle using bits and pieces of other successful things. Uh, I've had a uh, few interviews. There's been positive, but it's been light, and there's been negative, and it's been light. No one's really looking at the objective case that it could just be a very large, huge uh, scam. Do you think it's just gonna blow up or something? Call rejected. Sorry. Do you, are you familiar with Enron? No, no. Well, you need to look Okay, at so I'll look that up. And Enron was an energy company here in Houston. Yes, ma'am that build up and they had all these little twists where they were selling off things and buying things and didn't have real, real things that they were selling. I see. And when it, um, and people had invested large amounts oh, of money goodness. In it. Into something that's not Into, and, there. And it wasn't real. And when it all got caught, it blew up and everybody lost, lost their whole retirement money because they believed in Enron. What percentage of Houston do you think lost there? Everybody that had had money in Enron. E-N-R-O-N. And was it being peddled similar to Bitcoin in terms of the safe invest, not safe investment, but no, you can make it was money more or? like a Morgan Stanley thing. Ah, yeah, so they put a suit and tie on and, and buttoned it up for you. Yes. Okay. And, and and because it was, they had a big building, yeah. they had, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it was tied to energy. Yeah. And they thought there was no way they could lose their money and they were promised. But all this Bitcoin money. feels okay. a little Enron-ish Okay. Too. Do you think people made more money in the scam of Enron or do you think people will make more money in the scam of Bitcoin? They did not make money oh. in Enron. When it went bust, Everybody that had money wow. in there invested lost. lost. So no one won. Whole, no How one, to, but what? Enron won. Oh, Enron won. So who's going to win when Bitcoin, whoever owns it? Whoever has the, the legal tax strings that they can get. Pull it back. Because in Enron, those people that had the legal strings, they were the ones yeah. that were um, convicted and imprisoned. Wow. But... Not all those people that trusted them yes, lost all their money. They never got a cent back. That's a shame. That's scary. Bitcoin? Well, that's scary because I'm yeah. young. I've not experienced. I mean, I See, oh, I've seen the. the I've problem. Se I'm young. They so, were, do you think we're falling victim as as young the individuals? General memory. Okay. Is no longer than ten years. Okay. I've seen version six. This is seven. Statistically. 10 years is as long as most people remember. That's why drugs, mm -hmm. uh, PCP, yeah. is a bad, bad drug. Okay. So people recognize it, they wipe it out. It, 10 years later, PCP pups, 
pops back up, people using PCP. So you said you heard about Bitcoin 10 years ago? When's the most recent time you heard about Bitcoin? Except for when I talked to you about it right now. I I read the news in the internet. Ah, is it on there a lot? Because I don't read the news. Up periodically. I will scroll down and things like that, investments or money, okay. finance. Does that does finance news interest you? Yes. But Bitcoin doesn't because it's a scam. I can't see any reality based. Yeah. To it. Okay. It people who Enron has been maybe twenty years. Oh wow! And so that's like, that's two ten-year like cycles. You don't no, know I was a baby. And I was I was living in New Hampshire. You're I was a little this kid. Younger generation that like ooh Bitcoin. I that am. Sounds good. Well, that's but why I'm see, as. You've never heard about Enron. Yeah. So you don't have the experience. Yes, ma'am. Like I said, I'm old enough that I yeah. see bits and pieces of these. Of the same things, version same of the same. It's cookie thing. cutter almost. And it becomes version four or five. 4.5 because it's not exactly because yeah. it's kind of how do you objectify a good investment that's not a scam do you just do research or I have to look at the history okay I have to I actually investigate if there's individuals names to make sure they're not tied to any because there are people that are criminals that they did their criminal activities over 10 years ago and people forgot about it and they gotten out of jail and yeah. they just gear up to do it again in a different way yeah ceo of the company or the ceo of the hedge fund then i go to the better business Bureau. okay what do you think of jordan belfort pardon don't don't know the name uh wolf of wall street have you seen that movie it's the guy that screwed a lot of people out of money no i haven't seen it yeah enron was real life and that was enough for me no no uh wolf of wall street the biography um yeah, and i guess i deal and I've heard of it. Okay, I see. But uh, Morgan Stanley. Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys for checking out episode four of What the Bitcoin. Tomorrow, Mary will be back finishing up her story. 4.5. 4.5. I'm excited. I look forward to entertaining you guys tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe. Watch the next video here. Like, comment below.